<laughs> now in today's video, we're basically gonna try and prove whether or not I made a mistake in a previous video. <laughs> now, now proving that I made a mistake in a video at some point is kind of like proving that the sky is blue. It's not gonna be that difficult, but anyway, just bear with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to see whether or not there was a way for me to upgrade my YouTube money PC into a streaming capable PC, but for less money while having kind of like better streaming performance. Now I know I've been talking about streaming a lot, but since I started streaming on Twitch on Saturdays... On here. You play... you play a thousand... Oh! Did you just see that? Did you just see that shot? Oh! Okay, now I'm, I'm a pro CSGO player. That's I actually um, have been on a journey to figure out the best ways to stream and kind of how to set up my PC for it to work and stuff like that. And I keep finding out new ways to make my PC perform better without having to buy really crazy expensive hardware. Now just to quickly refresh you on what I did when I initially upgraded my streaming PC, the kind of thought process that went through my head was if you stream, you need a lot of CPU performance, right? That's just kind of the two go hand in hand. So what I did was I upgraded the 2400G Ryzen 5 CPU to a 2700. And then I also upgraded the graphics card because it was an RX 570. I upgraded to a Vega 56. Now the reason that I use the Vega 56 is because, well, they're quite cheap. Like you can get them for a really good deal. And well, I had one lying around. So I thought it was a very reasonable upgrade to make. And then at the same time, I upgraded like the case and stuff like that. But we're not gonna take that into account this video because that was purely based on my use case. Whereas today we're looking at a more general kind of approach. But then after that, I decided to use uh, an NVIDIA graphics card to stream with because I just wanted to see what NVENC has to offer. And what I realized was that I didn't need to upgrade the CPU in my PC, I just needed to buy an NVIDIA graphics card. <laughs> now I can immediately hear all of you going, David's a shill, David's a shill. We're talking specifically about streaming performance here. We're not talking about whether or not AMD is better than Nvidia. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the two kind of approaches you can take to turning your kind of entry level-ish gaming PC into a streaming capable PC. Now the first kind of way that you can go about it is upgrading the CPU from a 2400G to a 2700, which is going for about $170 on Amazon at the moment. And then you upgrade the graphics card from an RX 570 to like a Vega 56. The reason that you're upgrading your graphics card as well is because, well, the RX 570 doesn't have a lot of leeway for like losing performance while having streaming on. So you want a bit more graphical horsepower as well. Now, a Vega 56, you can get for about $300 on Amazon at the moment. Now, the other approach is not upgrading your CPU at all, but just spending a little bit more money upgrading your GPU to get something from NVIDIA with NVENC capabilities. So I'm gonna look at buying, let's say an RTX 2060. The reason that I'm using the RTX 2060 is because I have it available and it's got NVENC new. So it's got a very good version of NVENC on it. Although you can use like a GTX 1660 Ti if you wanna spend even less money on this kind of thing. Um, but you can get an RTX 2060 for about about $325 if you shop around. I actually got mine for like 300 bucks, the same as a Vega 56, but I was very lucky with that sale. So let's say $325. So that means that you're saving a good chunk of money only buying a new graphics card as opposed to upgrading the CPU and the graphics card. Now with that out the way, let's just have a quick look at normal unstreaming benchmark comparisons between the Vega 56 with the 2700 and the RTX 2060 with the 2400G. Just a quick note on the kind of benchmarks here though. Um, when testing with the 2400G, GTA 5 actually made the CPU commit suicide. Like I'm not joking, it full on stopped working. Um, so what I had to do for the benchmarks for the RTX 2060 was use the 2700, but turn off half of the cores so that we still have a four core and eight thread CPU. And it boosted to about the same point as a 2400G would. <laughs>
Now these benchmarks are actually really interesting in my opinion because the Vega 56 actually keeps up with the RTX 2060 really well. I thought there was going to be a bigger gap in performance between the two. I do have to note though that Battlefield 5 is fairly CPU intensive so the extra cores help there and Battlefield 5 ironically runs a lot better on AMD graphics cards than Nvidia graphics cards. Okay, so with that, they perform fairly similarly. It depends on what kind of game you're playing. But this isn't the point of this video. We're not just comparing the RTX 2060 with a worse CPU to a Vega 56. What we wanna see is what do these systems compare like while you're streaming? Now, first off, we're gonna start with PUBG. Now, here are two instances of them running next to each other. I had to actually enlarge them a bit because these streams are at 720p. Um, I was using X264 uh, fast for the Vega setup, and I was using NVENC new at, uh, um, at high quality. Now, as you can see here, in my opinion, I can't see much of a difference in actual streaming quality here. I actually kind of recorded it incorrectly, so it means that you don't have the frame, uh, the FPS counter on the RTX 2060 run, but I will say that you have to actually peg the RTX 2060 at a lower frame rate, because if you go over 90% graphics card utilization, NVENC starts behaving really weird, there's like a utilization bug there. Um, so directly comparing the FPS, doesn't make much sense, but I will say that the Vega 56 with the 2700 while streaming did struggle. It didn't even hit 90 frames per second. And I know that the PUBG version of RTX 2060, it did hit 90 frames per second almost consistently through the entire test. Now, when it comes to PUBG, which one wins? NVENC or X264 Fast? Now, when it comes to quality, this is quite difficult to answer because in a lot of the shots, they look exactly the same to my eye. But with this one, where you look at the actual like water tanks here, there is more detail with X264 Fast. So yeah, I think quality wise, it, they kind of trade blows with each other. However, the RTX 2060 with NVENC is cheaper and does run better. So I still think that it is the better solution. Uh, now moving on to the second and the last streaming test is Apex Legends. Now here again, I can't tell a difference in the quality between the two versions. Um, they look exactly the same to my eye. Again, let me know if you disagree with that in the comment section below. But when it comes to actual like performance, as you can see, the RTX 2060 had quite a higher um, average FPS through the run. And the Vega 56 actually had a lot more variation in the FPS and was a lot more stuttery in my opinion. Um, so again, in this case, the RTX 2060 wins because while well, it's got a better frame rate, the visuals look exactly the same and it's cheaper. So at this budget, with the hardware that we're looking at, it's very difficult to argue for CPU encoding. Now in conclusion, what do we think of the, the results here? Now I think that if you're streaming and you don't have a massive budget, so you can't afford a really expensive CPU like a 3900X or a 9900K, you kind of don't have a choice but to go with an NVIDIA graphics card. Because with an NVIDIA graphics card, you can have a pretty basic CPU in your system and you can still have really good streaming performance. But anyway, with that, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the video, do watch my stream later today. I start streaming at um, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, I'll have my Twitch linked in the description below. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the video for more videos like this one. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and there's a Discord server as well. And yeah, until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.